हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी आर गोइंग टू स्टार्ट विद द थर्ड चैप्टर ऑफ द टेक्स्ट बुक स्नैप शॉट द टाइटल ऑफ द चैप्टर इज रंगाज मैरिज बाय मस्ती वेंकटेश अयंगा द स्टोरी रिवॉल्व्स अराउंड रंगा द अकाउंटेंट सन हु गॉट द अपॉर्चुनिटी टू गो आउट ऑफ द विलेज टू स्टडी द नरेटर he takes us through a journey where he changes ranga's perception about marriage how he staged their union with the help of a shastri and what role english has played in their village the entire story involves funny instances and references for the narrator and has made sure your mind stays occupied with the story let us begin with the reading of the chapter Ranga the accountant's son is one of the rare breed rare breed means a person with characteristics that are uncommon among their kind so accountant's son named ranga he was one of the rare breed among the village folk who has been to the city to pursue his studies when he returns to his village from the city of bangalore the crowds mill around his house to see whether he has changed or not his ideas about marriage are now quite different or are they so the lesson as i said revolves around ranga the village accountant's son who had just come back from bangalore at the news of his arrival the villagers they mill around mill around means gather at his home to analyze if he had changed or not and what is the perception about marriage everyone was so excited about during those days because not everyone used to get a chance to go to cities for studying now when you see this title some of you may ask ranga's marriage why not ranganath viva or rangnath vijaya viva or vijaya viva is marriage and vijaya is victory well yes i know i could have used some other mouth filling one like jagannath vijaya or girija kalyanam girija here means female and kalyana means marriage but then this is not about jagannath's victory or girija's wedding it is about our own ranga's marriage and hence no fancy title so narrator he expects the reader to be questioning the simplicity of the title ranga's marriage he feels readers might be thinking of fancier titles like rangnath viva rangnath vijaya or girija kalyana he clarifies that although he had options of keeping such elaborate names the reason why he chose the basic and casual one is because the story is about a ranga as in someone who is very close and dear to him hoshali is our village so the name of the village is hoshali you must have heard of it no what a pity but it is not your fault there is no mention of it in any geography book those sahibs in england writing in english probably do not know that such a place exists and so make no mention of it sahibs it is a polite title or a form of address for a man so what he wants to say over here is as he said that they live in a village called hoshali in mysore and not many people know of it and the narrator he does not blame them because there is no trace of it in the geography books he says that even the englishmen have no idea about the place but they are also not to blame because our citizens too are completely ignorant about his village so he says that these sahibs who were writing in english did not know uh, that such a place exists and so make no mention of it so they do not talk about it and further he says that our own people they to forget about it you know how it is they are like a flock of sheep like a flock of sheep means a group of people having behaving in the same way or following what others are doing 
means the way english people behaved our people also behaved one sheep walks into a pit the rest blindly follow it when both both who are both here sahibs in england and our own geographers have not referred to it you cannot expect the poor cartographer to remember to put it on the map can you and so there is not even the shadow of our village on any map cartographer is a person who produces or draws maps so he says uh, he said that both english sahibs in england and also geographers they did not refer to this place so ultimately cartographer also did not draw it on the map and he compares uh, everyone to a flock of sheep he says that uh, there are people people like sheep who blindly follow each other and do not use their logic or brain to justify or invent things and at last he feels the cartographer is also not to be held responsible as a result there is no trace of their village on the map now see uh, the title was ranga's marriage and see where he has taken us he's talking about his village and he's talking about the people of england the english people that they did not Uh, mention it in their writing the cartographer did not put it on the map so the topic has changed a bit now in the second paragraph what he says sorry i started somewhere and then went off in another direction if the state of mesur is to bharat varsh what the sweet karik dabu is to a festive meal then hoshali is to mesur state what the filling is to the karik dabu bharat varsh here is india and what is karik dabu karik dabu is a south indian fried sweet filled with coconut and sugar so basically what he wants to say firstly he feels opposite apologetic for getting carried away and deviating from the topic then he throws light upon the significance of his village hoshali and he says that is it is just as important as mesur is to india karik dabu to a festive meal and filling is to karik dabu so here he is trying to highlight the importance of his village and he says that as mesur is important to our country and karik dabu is a festive meal then hoshali is to mesur state means he is uh, taking hoshali to be a mesur state and filling is to the karik dabu means whatever filling of the uh, sweet is there it is said that hoshali is like that what i have said is absolutely true believe me i will not object to your questioning it but i will stick to my opinion so he is talking glowing of his village and he says that whatever he has said it is completely true and he will not object to our questioning but still he will stick to his opinion i am not the only one who speaks glowingly of hoshali so he is not the only one who is praising his village he says that we have a doctor in our place and his name is gundabhata he also agrees with the narrator he has been to quite a few places no not england if anyone asks him whether he has been there he says no anaya anaya in kannad is a respectful term for an elder i have left that to you running around like a flea pestered dog is not for me i have seen few places in my time though as a matter of fact he has seen many so flea pestered dog me you have seen that uh, when the fleas they disturb the dog or they uh, trouble him so that dog it doesn't stick to one place but keeps roaming everywhere means he is infested by fleas and ticks which cause uncontrollable itching in the dog so he says that i am not uh, i do not run like a free pested dog so as 
narrator was talking glowingly of the village he says it is not only me but the doctor named gundabata he feels the same the doctor has been to many places except england and he still loves hoshali however an outsider might contest this but the narrator claims to stick to his opinion of the place and um, he says that uh, gundabata though he had he says that he had not been to many places but as a matter of fact yes he has seen number of places he has visited many places we have some mangoes trees mango trees in our village now he is talking about the special mango trees that are there in his village come visit us and i'll give you raw mango from one of them do not eat it just take a bite the sarness is sure to go straight in your brahmandra i once took one such fruit home and a chutney was made out of it all of us ate it the cough we suffered from after that it was when i went to the cough for the cough medicine that the doctor told me about the special quality of the fruit so as i said that here he tells the reader about the special mango trees in the village whose mangoes are famous for their special quality he once took the fruit at home to make a chutney and everyone suffered from a bad cough after eating it it was only when he went to see the doctor that he told him about the quality of mangoes of hoshali the narrator asks the readers to take a bite and assures that the sourness of the mango will be felt by them till the top of their head where brahmandra is located so uh, when you put it uh, when you take a bite of it the sourness you can very uh, you can very well feel uh, in your head or you get a sensation in your body i hope you have experienced this just as the mango is special so is everything else around our village so here he says that not only the mangoes everything in and around this village is remarkable we have a creeper growing in the ever so fine water of the village pond so he talks about a creeper growing in the fine water of the village pond its flowers are a feast to behold flower behold means to see or observe so flowers are i mean a feast to behold or to see means they are so beautiful they are so special get two leaves from the creeper when you go to the pond for your bath and you will not have to worry about not having leaves on which to serve the afternoon meal so he says that one can even serve an afternoon meal on its leaves and all you need to do is to grab two leaves when you are on your way to the pond to bath you will say i am rambling rambling means confusing you with my words it is always like that when the subject of our village comes up so he says that uh, i mean after speaking highly of his village he says that if uh, you must be thinking that i have confused you but when it comes to talking about his village he is unable to stop himself but now he says that enough uh, if anyone of you would like to visit us drop me a line i will let you know where hoshali is and what things are like here the best way of getting to know a place is to visit it don't you agree so he says that if, any, if anyone wishes to see him or his village one must contact him he will help us to reach there and he says that he feels that there is no better way to know a place than to visit it and i do agree with it i hope you also agree what he is saying drop me a line here means to give message what i am going to tell you is something that happened 10 years ago now the narrator 
he brings about a comparison as to how things were different 10 years ago when not many people knew or spoke English. So he says that I'll tell you what happened 10 years ago. We did not have many people who knew English then. Our village accountant, village accountant was the first one who had enough courage to send his son to Bangalore to study. It is different now. There are many who know English. During the holidays, you come across them on every street, talking in English. Those days, we did not speak in English, nor did we bring in English words while talking in Kannad. What has happened is disgraceful. Believe me, the other day, I was in Rama Rao's house when they bought a bundle of firewood. Rama Rao's son came out to pay for it. He asked the woman, how much should I give? Four pies, she said. The boy told her he did not have any change and asked her to come the next morning. The poor woman did not understand the English word change and went away muttering to herself. I too did not know. Later when I went to Ranga's house and asked him, I understood what it meant. So as narrator was saying that 10 years ago things were different and not many people knew or spoke English and neither did people send their children to big cities like Bangalore to study. So at that time only the village accountant had the courage to send his son to Bangalore and according to the author those times were simpler and he justifies his claim by telling an incident where he was at Rama Rao's house and they had just bought a bundle of firewood from an old lady. Rama asked her that how much he should pay for it. The lady said that uh, it is four pies. Rama Rao told her that it, he did not have any change and asked her to come the next morning. The poor lady did not know what change meant and she went away muttering to herself. Neither did the narrator know its meaning. It was only when he went to Ranga's house that he told him. So, uh, see how the time has changed. Earlier, whenever they uh, talked to each other, people were not knowing about English. They only talked in um, Kannad and did not bring English words in their conversation. But today, it says that it is disgraceful. It is very sad. And he is sharing one incident with us where uh, Rama Rao said to a poor lady when she asked for uh, money that he doesn't have change so the change was not understood and he brought this english word in the conversation this priceless commodity so he's calling english as the priceless commodity English language was not so widespread in our village a decade ago, means 10 years back this English language was not uh, commonly spoken in the village. That was why Ranga's homecoming was a great event. Ranga's homecoming was a great event. People rushed to his doorstep announcing the accountant's son has come. The boy who had gone to Bangalore for his studies is here, it seems, and come. Ranga is here. Let's go and have a look. So, as narrator said that 10 years ago, English was not commonly spoken in the village. And when the villagers came to know that Ranga, the accountant's son, was coming home from Bangalore, everyone got excited and rushed to his home to have a glance at him. Attracted by the crowd, I too went and stood in the courtyard and asked, why have all these people come? There is no performing monkey here. So fascinated by all the crowd, the narrator too went there and asked people as to why they were gathered because he couldn't see anything entertaining happening there like a monkey performing. So you must have, uh, uh, I don't know whether you have seen or not, but uh, when I was a child, the this monkey wala used to come and show his performance. So that is what 
narrator is saying that why you people have gathered over here is a monkey going to perform here a boy a fellow without any brains said loud enough for everyone to hear what are you doing here then a youngster immature and without any manners thinking that all these things were now of the past i kept quiet so when he said this a boy who was without brain he shouted loud enough for everyone to hear and in a rude way uh, said that then what are you doing here and narrator called him immature and the thinking that all these things were now of the past i kept quiet means thinking of the past in the sense when uh, in the past the children used to respect their elders but now time has changed seeing so many people there ranga came out with a smile on his face had we all gone inside the place would have turned into what people call the black hole of calcutta thank god it did not everyone was surprised to see that ranga was the same as he had been 6 months ago when he had left our village so all the people they were waiting outside ranga's house because the place would look like the black hole of calcutta if they all went inside black hole of calcutta means uh, if everyone entered his house it would have become i mean i mean all the people are there and uh, where you know what black hole is so he is calling calcutta the place black hole now by saying this he means that there were so many people that the house would have fallen short to accommodate them all so ranga he came outside with a smile on his face and everyone was so amazed to see that ranga had not changed a bit after he left 6 months ago so everyone was surprised to see him the same as he was 6 months ago an old lady who was near him ran her hand over his chest looked into his eyes and said the janewara is still there chanevara is in kannad and it is a sacred thread worn by brahmins i hope you know this he hasn't lost his caste she went away soon after that ranga lag so the old lady she went to the extent of running her hand through his chest to check for that sacred thread thread however she went away after confirming that he had not forgotten about his caste means he uh, did not forget his traditions his customs once they realized that ranka still had the same hand legs eyes and nose the crowd melted away like a lump of sugar in a child's mouth so the once the real villagers they realized that he did not change and uh, after moving to the city they disappeared as fast as a lump of sugar does in a child's mouth i continued to stand there after everyone had gone i asked how are you rangappa is everything well with you it was only then that ranga noticed me he came near me and did a namaskar respectfully saying i am all right with your blessings so ranga noticed narrator uh, when he asked about his well being and he replied with full respect in a traditional way ranga had not noticed the narrator in the crowd before that moment now i must draw your attention to this aspect of ranga's character so narrator he wants to draw our attention to this side of ranga's character and what is that he knew when it would be to his advantage to talk to someone and rightly assist people's words so ranga he was very well behaved and well aware as to do as to who could benefit him he was one of those who could analyze someone's worth rightfully as for his namaskar to me he did not do it like any present day boy with his heads 
head up towards the sun standing stiff like a pole without joints jerking his body as if it was either a van or a walking stick nor did he merely fold his hands so he says for uh, how he greeted the narrator he says that he bent low and touched his feet thereby seeking his blessings and it was not the present day namaskar where a children would do it casually it was a proper traditional one otherwise how it is done i mean today's present boy how does he uh, greet somebody i mean he will just fold his uh, sometimes they do not even fold their hand and says namaste uncle namaste aunty some of them they do fold their hand and uh, but this boy this ranga he did not uh, just uh, behave like a present day boy but he bent low to touch his feet and author blessed him that he might get married soon and then he left so he gave him blessing saying may you get married soon i said blessing him after exchanging a few pleasantries i left means after exchanging few more uh, talks or conversation he left that place that afternoon when i was resting ranga came to my house with a couple of oranges in his hand a generous considerate fellow it would be a fine thing to have him marry settle down and be of service to society so he says that he was a generous considerate fellow considerate means thoughtful concerned and uh, he thought of uh, ranga that it would be nice to get him married to a girl just as nice as him for a while we talked about this and that then i came to the point rangappa when do you plan to get married i am not going to get married now he said why not i need to find a right girl so he says that why he is not planning to get married he says that i need to find a right girl i know an officer who got married only 6 months ago he is about 30 and his wife is 25 i am told they will be able to talk lovingly to each other let's say i married a very young girl she may take my words spoken in love as words spoken in anger so here he is giving us an instance that uh, he knew an officer that who got married only 6 months ago and he is talking about the age difference that the man was 30 years old and his wife was 25 so he wants to say that there was a compatibility between them both were mature enough to understand each other and he says that according to him they will be able to talk lovingly to each other uh, but now he says that suppose i married a very young girl so she will take my word spoken in love as word spoken in anger so when he gave an example of an officer so he says that since both of them were adult they would understand each other's action and behavior whereas suppose the narrator finds a girl who is very young she could misunderstand his words or action because she is not mature enough recently a troupe troupe is a group of dancers in bangalore staged the play shakuntala there is no question of dushyant falling in love with shakuntala if she were young like the present day brides is there what would have happened to kalidas play if one gets married it should be to a girl who is mature otherwise one should remain a bachelor that's why i am not marrying now so now he mentions the love story of shakuntala and dushyant from uh dushan and says that he would not have fallen in love with shakuntala if she were too young in that case kalidas play also would have not existed 
that is why he intends on staying a bachelor till he finds the right girl so according to him he is looking for a girl who is mature enough to understand the life otherwise he says that one should remain a bachelor and that is the reason he is not marrying now i'll stop here and i'll continue in the next part of the lecture thank you हम्म ये क्या हुआ अरे यार